Now, for this unit, unit three, we're going to be moving into what we call reasoning, which is thinking. Now, thinking is one of the verbs that it's easy to write, but it's just not easy to do. There's a few type of reasonings. The one, the one we're going to start with is what we call inductive reasoning. I wrote it as question number one, but this is just really the meaning of it. Inductive reasoning is a logical process in which multiple premises, all believed true or found true most of the time, are combined to obtain a specific conclusion. In English, what this means is, this mumbo jumbo means that I'm just going to look for patterns. Right? I'm going to assume that things keep on happening the same way. I'm going to see how what has happened in the past. And based on the past, I'm going to predict the future. Right? I'm going to say everything happens the same way. You know, there's patterns. So let's take a look at examples. Find the next term in the sequence after the last one given. First of all, I see their fractions. Right, 10 over 9, 47 over 18, 37 over 9, 101 over 18. I see their fractions, so I'm going to assume the next number is a fraction. I see the numbers at the bottom. I see the denominators. First, I see a 9, then an 18, then a 9, then an 18. I'm going to say my next number is 9. Now, on the top, the numbers totally change. From 10 to 47, it seems like I add 37. For 47 to become negative 37, I could subtract 10. Now, for 37 to become 101, let me add, in this case, uh, let's see, 101 minus 37. That is 64. So I'm adding real different numbers. So I'm going to say, well, the next time, so I added a 37 first, and then I added 64 later. Here I'm going to say, well, let me add, let me subtract the 10 now. I'm adding some numbers, but then I'm subtracting 10 in between. So let me subtract the 10. 101 minus 10 will be 91. I can easily write a fraction, 91 over 9. I can easily write a fraction. Now, in your homework, when you had to type it, the way you will type a fraction, I'm going to go 91 backslash 9. I'm going to be using the backslash for fractions. Even if I have a negative sign, usually what I do in a negative sign, let, let me change this to red, just as an explanation. Let's say my answer, I had a negative sign in front of it. The way I will type it will be, let me put a negative sign in front of it. So for the typing, use the backslash for fractions. All right, let's take a look at number three. For seven to become four, I could subtract three. For four to become one, I could subtract three. Here I could subtract three as well. So it seems like I'm subtracting three each time. So I'm going to say my next number should be negative 5. All right, I subtracted 3 as well. Let's take a look at number 4. Let me try addition. I mean, probably that could, that could work. It's not always going to work. For 1 to become 2, I will add 1. For 2 to become 4, I could add 2. Then for 4 to become 8, I could add 4. So it seems like I'm adding different amount of times, different amount of numbers. What if instead of adding, I multiplied? What if I multiply by 2? Right? 1 times 2 gives me the next number. 2 times 2 gives me the next number. 4 times 2 gives me the next number. So for me to come out with the next number, I should multiply by 2. Sometimes I'm adding or subtracting, but some cases I might multiply or divide. So my result here, my next number on the list, should be 16. This case, I'm multiplying. I'm not adding. I'm multiplying by 2. Looking at question number 5. If I'm doing addition, or if I'm thinking of adding 0 0.5 to become a 2, I have to add a decimal. But then everything else is not a decimal. So I'm just going to assume I'm not adding. 
So let me try multiplication. In order for one half or 0 0.5, in order for 0 0.5 to become two in multiplication, let me multiply this by four. All right, two times four gives me eight, so that works. Eight times four gives me 32, so that works. So in order for me to come up with the next number, let me multiply by four. 32 times four happens to be 128. Sometimes it's adding, sometimes it's multiplying. Inductive reasoning is not only in numbers. It can also be seen in words. Use inductive reasoning to answer the following two questions. Will it be hot tomorrow? Now, yesterday wasn't hot. The day before wasn't hot either. The day before was not hot either. So based on what I've seen, you know, this is what I consider hot. Some of you might think, yeah, it was hot yesterday. In my case, I don't think it was hot. So this is my opinion. Like, yeah, it wasn't hot for the last three, four days. So I'm going to say tomorrow will not be hot. So will it be hot tomorrow? I'm just going to say tomorrow or well, it will not. be hot tomorrow. Question number seven, will it rain tomorrow? Yeah, it didn't rain yesterday or the day before or the day before or for a long time. It hasn't rained. I haven't seen rain for a long time. So will it rain tomorrow? I don't think so. So my answer for this will be it will not rain tomorrow. Inductive reasoning looks for patterns. What's happening? Re repetition. It could be numerical, like I did questions two to five, but it could also be in words. As a matter of fact, on, on the news, when you guys watch the weather, they look at what has happened in the past. I know that's that they use inductive reasoning and that's how this thing works. 